There's a, a, a regulation called the Payment Services Directive 2, which is kind of dull sounding like all regulation, but it does in fact force all of the banks to open up their account services to third parties, or trusted third parties, very importantly, uh, so that they, other people other than the banks can provide services to their customers, both commercial customers and consumers. So that's going to change everything, and that means they have to provide that information, they could, they could be some of those trusted third parties themselves and enhance the services they're already providing. But it's a very, very uh, intense piece of technology change that's going to happen over the next two, five years. PSD2, the, the, the second payment services directive from the European Union, looks at the modern world and they've said, you don't have to be a bank, you don't have to be a financial institution, you could be a, a telecoms company, you could be a firm of analysts, you could be a newspaper, you could be anything that involves that transaction. There's no reason we have to give you special status and call you a bank or a financial institution. There are going to be safeguards if you're taking people's money, obviously, because that would be, you know, otherwise it's robbery. They've invented what the future of banking and financial services might look like, and then it's the job of the industry and newcomers and entrepreneurs and guys with ideas to come along and populate that, that future, which is one issue for the incumbent banks, uh, there's another issue for the, the fintech startups, they've got lots of new ideas, and somehow that will all come together and a new ecosystem will emerge. It won't just be, here's your account, this is the amount of money you have or don't have, and here's a, a list of transactions. All of that could be integrated in cleverer ways. PSD2 does a, a, a specifically a couple of things. Um, and the one that is, is caused most confusion, to, well, it creates everybody's going to have access to everybody else's bank account. And this is not just happening in Europe. In the UK, in a post-European UK, there is a thing called the UK Open Banking Standards, which kind of fits in with the PSD idea. It's called access to accounts. X, access to a is how people abbreviate it, but it's, 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 it's a horrible and clumsy abbreviation. Um, so access to accounts means that payment service in initiators or payment service providers can be payment initiating service providers. One of the key things about the, the PSD2 phraseology in legal terms is this trusted third party. I certainly would trust my bank, for instance, because I trust them with my money. I may as well, and it, I mean, it could be anybody. There's huge competition. So suddenly the competition, which is the point of PSD2, because that's the point of the European Union, you see where that suddenly comes together. Now we've got a proper fair fight between everybody. We're standing right in the middle of the, the, the main financial district in London. Although they're all very close together, they don't really talk to each other very much and they don't really communicate except through intermediaries like exchanges and clearing houses. And that's what's really about to change. It's, it's all of that, everybody playing in the same ecosystem, so nobody's a specialist anymore, which is kind of good, but it means you have to go and find the specialist in that particular bit. So there's lots of gaps in everybody's knowledge. And, and that you know, play nicely together idea is going to be very difficult for some people to do, but it's going to be essential for them to work with others, to recognize the skills of others, know what you're good at, know what other people are good at, and, and find the skills you need to get to where it is you want to be which is presumably a healthy and thriving business. Of course there's got to be standards. The banking industry and the IT part of that all said, well, we need an API. It's almost as though it's the only way anybody could think of doing it. So yes, there's going to be you know, several APIs, but uh, hopefully not 8,000. Traditionally, the banks with their very expensive and very old IT systems are in a kind of maintenance mode most of the time. So they've now got an opportunity to, to leapfrog that, thanks to the clever developers and, and in some cases some of their own. There are guys within institutions and quite a few women as well, I can assure you, who are really working on and trying to persuade their institutions to adopt and, and change their, their mindset almost. So that's, the whole thing has become a developer mindset now. Everybody wants to develop things. 
survival is, is one opportunity. But there's also new ways of doing things will allow banks to put themselves back in the, that, that value chain that they thought they were getting disintermediated from. People, actually, it's a, quite a surprising fact that even after the crash and the anti-capitalist riots around the world and all the G7 protests and so forth, people still really trust their banks, more or less, um, when it comes to the money. Now, it might be Bank A is very good at small businesses, whereas the bank next door might be particularly good at, at, at car loans, you know, auto financing, that sort of thing. You could bundle those together, you could bundle it with a fintech who's really good at doing something on a mobile phone, for instance. The only way that is going to work is with APIs, because uh, people have to have some sort of mechanism for accessing the money at the end of the day. And it wasn't developers, it was a guy in the banking side of the bank said, what if we, what if we did this? And then they went and got their friend who said, and he said, well, we can just download that and we can do whatever we need to. It's the magic of all of those things working together and ideas firing off different types of people. So the role of the developer in the traditional sense changes as well because it's, it's making people's ideas and business ideas come to life. There are security issues, and as you open it wider, that is going to be one of the big issues. But on the whole, financial institutions, banks have been pretty good at looking after the money. I need to be able to talk to people's bank accounts, and this lets me do that. The law says you've got to let these people have access to that account. There's all sorts of caveats to that. There are issues around risk and liability, and uh, we, we joke about various hackers sitting in, in basements across um, countries that I won't name, um, who are writing their own APIs, because that's what hackers do. So there are, there are issues around security and, 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 and risk, and, and that's what banks do anyway. There, there are issues on, on mobile banking applications. As you know, we've all seen some of the stories around that. And on the whole, banks are pretty good at looking after the money. So I, that, I think that's, that's a bit of a, a red herring, that side of things. But it, it is the access to accounts that changes things. The only other bit of the PSD2 that's specifically mentioned is the robust security on authentication. We don't know yet. Um, in fact, I think early in 2017, the, the technical standards for what robust looks like get published. But it's, it is obviously going to be a given. Consumers will see the benefits first because they'll be, they'll be getting a whole new raft of services. You can get a much better idea of where all your finances are, make more predictions and, and, and have a, a level of control over your, your own information. And you can share that with who you need to share that with. Having the ability to use an API to initiate a transaction and just take the money from your account, which sounds scarier than it actually is, but it, it takes out the risk of them having your credit card details stolen from their databases because they don't have the details anymore. I think the interesting thing about PSD2 actually is most people dismiss it as a, a fairly typical piece of European law making and oh, how dull is that. When you start reading it and one or two people, bright people went, read this bit, read this bit about access to accounts. And all of, I don't know how many pages, it's thousands of pages of European law, it's translated into all European languages, but there is one phrase in there that says access to accounts. And that is what's going to change everything and because everybody has access to accounts that means everybody's going to have to work together to make sure that those frictions that exist between ways of doing business are removed. Whatever happened to fax machines? It's, it's, the, it's a whole technology that came and went in my lifetime. That's going to happen with other you know, things like payment technologies. Maybe credit cards won't exist for much longer because of the way that the rails of payment, you know, in, in the UK we have the faster payment uh, system, so it's instant payments, bank, account to account, uh, and in the US and Canada, Australia, and, and nearly all of Europe, by the end of 2017, are going to have instant payments, which is a way that the technology has is, is, is changed it, but on top of that you then put PSD2, and so now everybody can join in and use those rails. So that's, the, that's where it's going to make a difference. So the, the number of things that come together and, and cause that change.
because of the, the volume of uh, financial transactions that go through here in terms of foreign exchange and even euro transactions that go through London is that there's a huge depth of expertise and it's probably one of the leading places in the world for the so-called fintech innovator companies. So there's a massive number of very small, very bright uh, groups of people doing very innovative things uh, which the bigger banks and the more sensible banks are starting to realize they can actually bring into their ecosystem and help their customers and help themselves to take, to take their role back in, in the financial transaction. So those are exciting times. The thing about PSD2 is it's not happening in isolation. You have technology happening, you have the cultural shifts because of the way we use and interact with our personal technology particularly, and that works into business as well. Guys who run treasury for large corporates are the kind of people that already own iPads and, and whatever, so they expect the same services they get with their own personal bank accounts to be working in their corporate banking accounts, and they expect to be able to do that from anywhere, anytime. PSD2 changes everything about the way payments are done and the way banking is going to be done in the future. Uh, which is not bad for a little dull European law, is it? I don't think that's what the lawyers meant. <laughs> they, they, they're going to change much more than they thought they were going to change. By just adding that competition and putting it with a mix of the technology and the cultural changes that are going along as well, it's going to change very rapidly.